Hello. So Drew Damon sent me down an, an Alliation rabbit hole, so thanks for that. Um, I was listening to the Alliation score, and one thing that really struck me is all these complex envelopes that are happening. And I got to thinking about, well, how can we apply this a little more generally to real life um, in our own music? So I got to thinking about complex envelopes inside of Eurorack. Um, so what we're going to do is set up a patch that's kind of um, a synth brass patch but has complex envelopes so we can generate more rhythm than just like the one attack. Um, so I've got my Sapel running a clock into the Stilson hammer. It's running externally and all it's doing is sending out Ds. It's sending out one note and it's sending quarter notes. So it's, you know, every four... Um, clock ticks it's sending out a gate okay so how would I set this up um, my first thought is you know any synth brass we have to um, have at least two oscillators so what I'm gonna do is take my CV out using a stackable cable I'm gonna use the surge here one volt per octave. I'm going to send the next one to my instro. This doesn't have a sawtooth. It has a ramp, but we're going to call that close enough for, for our purposes today. Um, so our next step is we come out of the instro. I'm going to a mixer, an audio mixer, and we're going to go out of the surge into the same audio mixer. So sawtooth and ramp coming into audio mixer. And I think the instro is louder, so we're gonna just have to probably adjust that. We'll see. Um, I've already pre-tuned the oscillators, so they should be pretty close to each other. Um, so then our next step in the audio <coughs> um, signal chain is to go into a filter. Let me get that wired up. So we're going to go from the mixer output. Oh boy. <laughs> and I realize I have a quadrax right here, and yes, that does complex envelopes. I'm trying to show this for people who don't have uh, fancy modules that do all these crazy envelope outputs. Um, so anyway, we're going from the mixer to my QPOS I like this one because it has two filter frequency CV inputs. You're going to see that's going to be really useful. Okay, so that's that's kind of our audio chain. We were, we're going to come out of here to the VCA. Um, so let's talk about the envelope chain. A couple ways to wire this up. I'm going to show you the way I like, but we'll talk about the other one. I'm taking the gate output of my sequencer. You can either go to a multiple and then into two envelope triggers. You can go into, use a stackable cable to do that. My goal here is different rhythms coming out of the envelope. So I'm gonna use maths. And again, two ways here because maths has an end of rise output and an end of cycle output. So what I'm gonna choose is end of the channel four which has an end of cycle output. And the reason is because if you're using end of rise, the envelopes are sort of closer together rhythmically. If you use end of cycle, they can be a little further apart, but I'll show you both ways. So then my next step is I'm gonna use end of cycle to trigger the other side. So you can see here, we now have two envelopes wired up that are happening at different times. So then, our next step becomes, well, how do we get this going anywhere? Um, so, let's talk about that. What we need are two channels in a VCA. Because we have two envelopes, we need two channels. I'm using the Tango Quartet because it has a mix output. Um, so, our next step is going to be to sort of wire this up. Um, I'm going to take my low-pass filter out of the QPAS, and I'm gonna go use a stackable cable, although you could use a malt to do this, and I'm gonna go into channels one and two on my VCA, okay? So there's our audio. Our next step is to take 
I'm gonna take the you know what let me use blue cables so they stand out a little bit we're gonna go from our channel 4 on the maths to channel 1 on the VCA although this kinda doesn't matter at a certain point channel 1 on the maths to the VCA okay now what about the filter what about the filter right so I screwed that up we're gonna go into a malt first so envelope to malt other envelope to other malt I just have a multiple here that is split into two sides of four okay so then what we do is we're gonna take the top malt we're gonna go into filter frequency and we're gonna take the other side and we're gonna go into the VCA so this is kind of like Moog wiring where the envelope is doing both amplitude and filter frequency at the same time all right same thing on the other envelope so I'm gonna take the bottom malt I'm gonna go into filter frequency I'm gonna take the other side the other output of the malt and go into my beautiful um, VCA here so then let me cut and repoint the camera so here we have the tangle quartet so I've got it's a four channel thing I'm only using the top two and you can see there two flashing red lights so then what I'm gonna do this has a mix output and that's sort of critical to this working right in your rack we go from the mix output I'm going to a reverb um, just because I like a little bit of polish on the sound then we're gonna take left side and go to my left mixer take right side and go to the right channel of my mixer and now we'll have some sound <laughs> <laughs> so here's my envelope and we can do a lot with this um, let's start with they're detuned a little bit from each other and that's um, purposeful because good synth press is a little sl splatty sound and you can just adjust your fine tuning to taste Okay, so less or more splatty. I kind of like for this, you know, if we're talking animation, we want the more sci-fi sound. Okay, now I'm going to repoint the camera at the envelope, and we'll finish this off. All right, so here's my maths. This is controlling our two envelopes. We have a complex envelope because it's more than one. And these can do kind of whatever. <laughs> okay so rise and fall becomes our controller of rhythm basically so you would take this and put it an octave down and it would be real mayhem another way you can try this is to switch these so uh, <clears throat> we would go into channel one we would take end of rise this gives you different rhythmic options <laughs> they overlap more basically <laughs> Okay. I tend to prefer the other way where we're getting an end of cycle because I like these to be able to be really different. Okay. And just for fun, 
cut here and we'll tune it down and you'll get the full effect. Okay, so let's listen to it um, an octave down. <laughs> we'll move the fine tuning a little bit. <laughs> so it starts to feel a little talky. Yeah, so put a distortion on that. And you've really got something happening here. You can even play with the resonance. Maybe a little too much there. There you go. More subtle. So I hope you learned how to wire up some complex oscillators, and I hope this helps. <laughs>